Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahqam SOS, the show that discusses Islamic duties and practices by His Eminence, the Grand Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi. May Allah prolong his life. I'm your host, Mohsin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma'ash. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikhna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. MashaAllah. Sheikhna, you know, we've been discussing Jama'a Salah, we're discussing um, you know, the importance of Jama'a Salah, the congregational prayer, how much tawab there is in it. Uh, we discussed um, the conditions of the Imam, we talked about, you know, him being uh, balugh, sane. We talked about him having uh, being adil, and you know, him being of legitimate birth, and other things. And we were discussing in regards to how to follow the Imam. Where, you know, when it comes to the niyyah, what niyyah we should have. Is it important to know the Imam or not to identify him before the niyyah? We talked about. Um, you know where we should stay silent, where we should you know recite, and we discussed whether one could uh, intentionally do the taslim before the imam, and you said that it was it was okay. It's better not to because of the thawab, but it's okay. What about sujood and ruku? Are we allowed to perform that deliberately before the imam of the congregation? It is mandatory for the one who performs the salah as a follower behind the Imam of the Jama'ah to make sure that um, acts such as the Ruku' and Sujood to be done with the Imam or after the Imam goes to Ruku or Sujood we go then afterwards however if somebody deliberately and with intention he didn't want to um, follow the Imam so he goes to Ruku before the Imam or he goes to Sujood uh, before the Imam in this case the Salah is valid these acts are not part of the mubtalat that voids and invalidates uh, the act of salah. However, the Sayyid mentions that uh, that these are of committing disobedience, and somehow mm. there's a possibility of that you're committing ma'asya um, um, or disobedience, and somehow for not following the correct um, the. Um, Method, method of or the sequence ahsant, uh, of the Imam. And that's important that we follow the Imam because you're in the Jama'ah. If you're alone and you're praying for Ada, fine, do whatever you want. But when you're with Jama'ah, you must respect the, the sequence, respect um, all the parts of the Salah which is prayed by the Imam and try to avoid preceding the Imam. Uh, as I've said in the previous episode, that the Thawab will be less. Uh, if somebody finishes the salah before the imam, for example. But in these acts, there's some kind of disobedience, so we have to make sure that we avoid this, at least in the salah, because the salah is ibadah and worship. And we don't uh, um, bring inside the salah uh, some kind of disobedience. We need to have a, a pure salah from all types of um, disobedience, all types of filth, all types of sins and bad thoughts and habits and so forth. So we try to offer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a salah with purity, with loyalty, uh, with full submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. MashaAllah. Shaykhna, what about if I involuntarily do something to go ahead of the Imam? For example, I'm in Ruku uh, and I, you know, I, re I go up, I raise up and I've noticed, oh, the Imam in front hasn't left uh, Ruku. Or if I'm in sujood and I lift my head up by accident, not on purpose, by accident, I lift my head up and I see, oh, the Imam's still in sujood. What is one supposed to do in that situation? With regard to these two acts of salah, ruku' and sujood, if somebody was in the state of ruku' or sujood, in both cases, 
when the Imam is in that state of ruku' let's say initially, and you think that the Imam raises his head from uh, the uh, ruku' state, and you just stand and you raise your head, but you see the Imam is still in the ruku' state, in this case you, ha you have to go back to the ruku'. And that's not count counted as a second rak'ah or ruku'. And it's not count counted as a adding to the, um, the key element in the salah. Because as we said, ruku' is a key element. Rukun, yes. Uh, rukun, and if you add an extra ruku' to the salah, the salah will be batil. But in this situation? In this situation, because it's jama'ah, it's not counted as second ruku'. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. You go back to the ruku' again, continue with the imam, his ruku', and then you stand up and with the imam and continue the salah. Likewise with the sujood as well. You see the imam in the sujood, and you think he's just, you know, raised his head from the sujood, from the turba. Again, you, you sit and you think the imam is uh, in the sitting position. You see him still in the sujood, you go back. And continue the sujood with the imam uh, that has no issues with it, even if you have now three sajda. Literally, you've done three sajda, yeah, indeed, but it's not yeah. counted. It's oh, not counted okay. three sajda. It's only counted two sajda because you're performing the act with the imam. What about if I did it on purpose? Am I allowed to uh, raise from sujood before the imam deliberately? As we mentioned that um, deliberately if you, if you uh, proceed the imam, that is some kind of disobedience as mentioned in the previous uh, question. So to proceed the, Im the imam uh, in these acts is some kind of ma'asiyah that we have to um, avoid. And is that the same with the ruku as well? Same thing as well. I send Sheikh. Sheikh, what about if um, the Imam of the of the Jama'a he makes a mistake? For example, he uh, does qunut in the wrong raqa. How is the the followers? How are they supposed to react to this? The scenario is that if in the first raqa, for example, the Imam mistakenly after the hamd and surah he raises his hands and read the qunut in the first rak'ah. You as a follower, you're not allowed to follow the imam because you know that he did a mistake and he didn't realize. So you have to keep quiet and silent till the imam finishes <coughs> the qunut, which was not in its right location and, and, and place. And then when he goes to ruku', you follow the imam. That's it. So you shouldn't do the same mistake. He's doing the mistake, you shouldn't repeat the mistake. Okay, so don't, don't, do not follow the mistake. Exactly. Just stay patient, quiet, mm -hmm. and continue the salah when he goes into the correct position. Yeah. Sheikhna, we know that in the Jama'ah we have people of different capabilities, different patience, and different strengths. Um, and also, when the Imam comes in praise, sometimes he prays very, very fast, sometimes very, very slow. Um, we need to keep into consideration the people that are amongst us. Sometimes it's difficult for you know the elders, elder people of the community to maintain their wudu, um, especially during salah. So, I mean, is it okay for the Imam of the Jama'a to pray quickly um, or to pray you know at a, at, a, at a very good and steady pace for those who find it difficult to stand for too long uh, and, and perform salah? It is mustahab and desirable for the Imam of the Jama'ah to consider the weakest members in the uh, Jama'ah jama and the followers in the Salah. In other words, the elderly and the young ones. And there's a hadith, by the way, in Nahj al balagh by Imam Ali alayhi salam, which says he advises uh, an individual uh, who wants to lead the Salah in Jama'ah he said, وَصَلُّوا بِهِمْ صَلَاةَ أَضْعَفِهِمْ And pray and consider the weakest ones in the jama'ah. So you have elderly, you have young children, young children as well. Yeah. And I remember I once read in uh, one of the narrations that the Prophet Sallallahu in his mosque, he used to also speed up in the salah because there were ch uh, children and kids crying. Because there were men and women, jama'ah. Mm -hmm. 
and kids were brought in the masjid crying. So he wanted to finish the salah quickly for the parents to attend uh, to the children, uh, pay attention to the ch children, and make them quiet. So in jama'ah, you try to speed up the salah. If, of course, there were elderly and, and, and so forth. Otherwise, if they all agreed that, you know, you, they're all, for, let's say, young men and strong and fit to pray uh, and prolong the salah, fine. You can take your time and pray the salah for 20 minutes, let's say, for example. No, mm -hmm. no issues with it. But that's uh, the base for uh, the, uh, the qa'idah for those who wish to pray uh, salah jama'ah to speed up the salah in ruku' and sujood uh, and not to make people wait, you know, especially those who have back pains, for example, yes. especially illness, to make the salah ease for them so they can attend every day and every time. Asant, mashallah. You would assume that in jama'ah you, you're all together and then, you know, let the, let the imam take his time to gain that spirituality, but no, alhamdulillah, Islam is a religion of ease and he's saying that, look, you know, be quick. Uh, we with your Jama'a Salah because people aren't you know, fully uh, strong and have the full capabilities of praying together for that long, mashallah. Shaykhna, it is mustahab to pray in congregation. We, we mentioned that. Um, are there any other mustahabat in the Jama'a Salah? Yes, as mentioned here, the list of mustahabat in the book of the Sayyid Hafizahullah that it is mustahab um, for the one who is male to stand on the right side of the Imam. So let's say it's between you and me only who are going to pray. So you stand on, on my right side in the Jama'ah and I am on your left side as the Imam. And we pray. That's one of the mustahabbat, of course. Also, if the Imam and the Ma'mum, they're both female. So you have the female Imam in the front and the follower is also female. It's mustahab for them and prefer to stand in line and um, the Imam should not of course stand ahead of the Ma'mum so they stand in line that's for only females of course that's one of the mustahabat as well other mustahab that it's mustahab for uh, the Jama'ah which is uh, done by the male mainly the Imam stands in the mid midpoint of the row so in the, in the front in the midpoint and you have the rows behind him. Oh, I see, I see. So, um, we, we, which is quite common. So you have the first uh, line. So the imam should be in, in the middle of the f of that first, first row. In the front yeah. and in the middle, exactly. not on the left or on the right. Exactly, yeah. Uh, yeah. It is also mustahab for those who follow the imam in the jama'ah to organize their rows. In other words, uh, avoid disorder in uh, the lines when they, when they stand for the salah and not to leave any gaps yes. between each other. Yes, this is a big problem I see in the Shia community. There's, there's big gaps between um, you know, the, the jama'ah. Ah. Um, you know, it's so big sometimes you can even walk through, walk through them. You know? um, what does the Sayyid say? That we should walk shoulder to shoulder? The Sayyid says just must have to uh, be in the correct order. So. You make sure you don't leave any gaps. So okay. when you stand next to your brother, Muslim brother, to pray, then you shouldn't leave any gaps between you and him. So that's, we don't have really that, that strict as other sects have in mm -hmm. terms of shoulder, shoulder to shoulder. So basically, you just stand next to your brother, uh, faith, faithful brother, and pray. And don't leave any gaps between each other. Um, with regard to the next uh, mustahab, is that when the imam says in the Iqamah but Qamat al-Salah it's mustahab that they all rise up and stand. stand and prepare themselves for the Salah because that's the sign and the call for the Jama'ah to be held and uh, they prepare themselves you know it's, it's not convenient for the one to sit down and talk to his uh, friend next to him and the Imam says Allahu Akbar so the Iqamah is where to prepare the Mu'min the follower for the Salah, and especially when it reaches this part of Aqamat al-Salah, so they all stand up, uh, make the intention. When the Imam says, Allahu Akbar, they would uh, start uh, Takbirat al-Haram after the Imam. And lastly, uh, the last mustahab is when the Imam is in the state of the Ruku'ah. 
and somebody comes and he wants to join uh, the lines of the jama'ah, it's mustahab for the imam to wait and double the time of the rukur. To extend it, yes. Extend the time of the rukur, prolong it a bit, just a few more seconds, so that individual would join the imam and the jama'ah uh, with the and get the reward of that rak'ah, although he missed the hamd and, and surah, yes. but he would gain the thawab of that rak'ah that uh, he just came in the mid uh, no, I've, I've seen it happen, um, you know, when ruku and then you, you, you'll hear someone shout, Ya Allah, Ya Ali, or something like that. And then the Imam of the Jama'ah, he would start to recite extra um, exactly. you know, dhikr in his, his ruku to extend, to allow people to join, inshaAllah. Um, Shaykh, we've discussed the mustahabat. What about the makruhat in terms of Jama'ah Salah? In terms of, of the makruhat and the dislikes in the salah, of course, the makruh in the salah, it means that the thawab will be less. The thawab will be, um, and the rewards will be less than those who do not practice these acts in the salah. It's makruh for the one who follows the imam to stand alone in a row. When there are gaps between the mu'mineen. So try to go and fill the gaps instead of being alone back in the line. You know, some people might like to stand alone or in the, the very back of the musallin. So no, try to find the gap and join yourself with the others in the jama'ah and uh, avoid uh, this makruh. The other makruh for the ma'mum is to utter the adhkar such that the imam can hear him. So. As I mentioned in Salat al Asr, that you can uh, say Subhanallah, La ilaha illallah, dhikr, while the Imam is reading the Hamd and Surah silently. So you can, make, but make sure you don't, uh, you know, recite them aloud, that the Imam and the others would hear you, and that will distort the gesture of the Salah and, and the Musalleen. The last makruh is. For those who travel occasionally, especially for the lectures for us, for example, Mubalighin who go and uh, travel in different cities and countries to offer lectures, for example, they have to basically offer Salat Jama'ah. So if they are, as a traveler, Musafir, then they have to shorten their Salah and pray Qasr. In this case, the Sayyid says that it is makruh on both sides. If they are Qasr. So if the Imam is praying Qasr Salah and the followers are paying full, praying full Salah, it's makruh to have that Salah. And vice versa, if the Imam was praying full Salah and the Ma'mum and the follower praying Qasr Salah, is also makruh for them to perform the Salah. So the best thing is to find a Jama'ah uh, which they pray full, so you follow that full salah. If you have qasr salah, then you can pray it um, um, uh, individually, uh, furada. Otherwise, you can pray in jama'ah. Asan, thank you very much, Sheikhna, for today's discussion. And thank you to all the viewers for joining us. Insha'Allah, we'll have more discussions on jama'ah salah on the next episode of Ihqam SOS. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.